Is it part of the, uh, mm -hmm. So, say 10 years from now, you find the right person and, you know, you're unable to have children and IVF is an option. Would you rule that out? I wouldn't rule it out. I would probably look for ado maybe probably adoption more for me personally. I mean, I don't oppose IVF, obviously, but, you know, it's, it's I know it's a lot of pain and a lot of money, too. And, you know, it's, it wouldn't be my first option, but I would definitely not be opposed to it. Did you guys research the cost for this at all? And yes. What it does cost for those who want to pursue this path? For one that? cycle, the average cost for it is $12,000. Um, max can be as much as 15000 and as low as 10000 And then after um, you do that, the cycle, if you have leftover embryos, all you do is mainly pay for the medicine, which ranges from 1500 to 3000 Who pays for that? Um, from my understanding, I, I believe it's the, the patient. Out of pocket or insurance? It would be out of pocket. Insurance did not cover it. In most cases, insurance does not cover because it's seen as a, an option procedure, right? Okay, so let's 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 dig a little bit more, Michael. First of all, thank you for sharing a little bit of your story. I appreciate that. Uh, it is it is a story that I know as well, as my wife and I went through IVF with both of our children. Um, Talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on on the creation of embryos from an IVF cycle. So if if uh, if if a couple wanted to go through IVF, embryos were created, they had children, as was the case with my with my wife and I, and there's embryos left over. Uh, from your personal, moral, and ethical standpoint, what do you think should happen to those embryos? I would I would lean towards the adoption with snowflake things like that so adopt them out to another company mm -hmm. couple that might want an embryo yeah and research that gets a little tricky for me with the whole thing so things i guess i'm not completely opposed to it so yeah. i'm not completely like, um, so so if that couple no longer needed or wanted those embryos your recommendation would either be through some embryo adoption mm -hmm. like snowflake uh um, so what the second one uh, donate them with the two stem cell research. Two stem, the two stem cell research. What about you, Chase? What do you think? I'll probably do the same thing. I would think about adopting them in the apply for stem cells because if you freeze the embryo because you're not much struggle with dealing with it, it right. costs probably about probably. When I researched $2,000 to initially freeze them, and then a couple hundred dollars or more, and you don't need embryos on frozen per year. Per year. So if you're really, it's been like eight years, those can take a stack. And so at that point, I feel like you have a decision whether or not. So I feel like I'm probably just going to have option to any of my problems. So I'm just going to do I would personally want to put them up for adoption. But I know that it low the cost, it'd be very hard to kind of keep them frozen until they find uh, like another couple who wants them. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I'll, I would also want for you know, medical treatments to be discovered. But I just, I wouldn't like the idea of killing potential humans so I would want to put them up for adoption but I don't know if it'd be possible to keep doing that with just the financial cost behind it. Yeah. Obviously adoption is probably the best choice out of all of those but organizations like Snowflake they're only take care of to drop in the ocean and the amount of embryos that are out there so it's probably not going to be reality our specific embryo that we're trying to get adopted, right. perhaps. So probably putting it towards stem cell research. Are any of you familiar with the concept of a compassionate transfer? Can I take just a minute and educate you on that? Okay. Compassionate transfer is when you have embryos left over, but you uh, and your spouse are no longer interested in having additional children. Rather than disposing of or, or adopting out that embryo, what you can do is you can transfer that embryo into the mother, into the potential mother, without med other medical intervention, without giving a lot of the medicines that typically allow that IVF implantation process to start. Certainly there is an opportunity to still have a child that way because you have an embryo introduced into an environment that it, that it is naturally in, uh, but less likely because of the lack of additional medications and medical intervention. So there is that option as opposed to disposing of a life, certainly still leaving it in God's hands as you would in a natural uh, situation, but there there is another option. What's the success rate with IBM? Did you, did you come across, you know, the average success rate? And 
many times. I didn't come across, I didn't find any exact percentages, but I think it's fairly successful. Uh, and I didn't Define barrel. Yes, like 10%, 50%. I think I might have seen maybe 45% success rate. On the first time? Yeah, yes. That's just what I found. If it is unsuccessful, are the patients still required to pay that money? Yes, they are. How many um, people in the United States pursue this? Do you, uh, um, do you know how many couples pursue this each year? I, I didn't come across any exact data again, but um, it probably due to the cost of it, it's probably not as popular with many couples that can't have children. Most people probably turn to adoption or other organizations like that. This is a little bit out of your scope, so you may not know the answer to this, but um, how, do you know what the cost comparison is between abortion and IVF at all? Based on different organizations? You mean adoption? Yeah. Yeah, that, what did I say? Abortion. abortion. <laughs> That's a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, abortion. No, I'm going to say it again. Adoption and, and IVF. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and the, so I'm asking the cost difference, if you, if you guys looked at that at all. I know it's a little out of your scope, but. Yeah, I don't think I came across anything in my research. I feel like we've kind of camped out in the IVF um, piece of this subject for a while, and really stem cell, I know, was your main focus. Uh, let's shift just a little bit, gentlemen. If, uh, I think I recall correctly that everybody was against destroying embryos, just kind of on the face of that, realizing that life starts at conception uh, from each of your point of views. Um, points of view. Sorry, Mr. Um, let's. That's true. You do. We'll call it. Okay. Um, so if that's the case, and we said that there are other ways to get stem cells, we said it's a little more difficult, but there are other methods to utilizing stem cells in a therapeutic uh, environment. Correct. Uh, how far do we feel like that has gone? Do we feel like that? Does the medical community feel like that still has potential? And if so, if there's this uh, innate conflict that comes with destroying an embryo just to harvest stem cells for this therapeutic um, stem cell research, or therapy, ultimately, do we feel like we could put more leverage towards this adult stem cell line? Is that happening? Or is it just easier so everybody's going for the easiest thing and that's embryonic stem cells? Well, it's definitely easier to do the embryonic stem cells, but I think there is there is a lot of research happening for the adult stem cells. Okay. A lot of potential with them as well. So, like, they're not dismissing it outright. Like, a lot of there's a lot of potential with them still. Do we feel like that's going to grow more, or do we feel like we're still going to put a lot of emphasis on embryonic stem cells? I think it'll only keep growing. Okay. Why? Just because uh, there's a lot of diseases that we haven't had cures for that stem cells can be used for. And, uh, I don't know. If people continue, if the controversy continues with embryonic stem cells, then potentially adult stem cells will be the only way to get them, so if that's the case, then I would just keep going as well. So from a therapeutic standpoint, uh, there's there's benefit minus controversy then in, in vetting out those adult stem cells, correct? Um, outside of the NIH, if we go to private, private funded uh, corporations, uh, those corporations, what is their main goal? I know you love it when I do this. Sorry. What's the main goal of any company? To make money. Okay. So, how do you make money? Going the easy way or going the hard way? Easy way. Going the easy way. What's the easy way? Embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells. Why am I, as a really mean, cold-blooded corporation, going to pursue adult stem cells if I can just go the easy way, make more money or save more money by going the embryonic stem cell route? So as people of faith, what can we do to help motivate that situation away from destruction of embryonic stem cells and maybe more towards bearing out those adult stem cells or those less easy paths that might cost those companies more money? Well, you could um, bring up the uh, fact that, you know, this could be this um, embryo which could develop, so this could, this 
this could become a person, you know, right. someone's child, or in a biblical standpoint, God's child. And it's kind of like the idea of God has a purpose for that said person, and it's like you're destroying it. Um, destroying God's purpose in creation because Jeremiah said that uh, you know, he, he was talking to, to Jeremiah saying before I formed you in the womb I knew you so he already had a plan set up even before the womb basically saying that an embryo you're, you you definitely have a plan in that case God knows you so it's like someone who could go on to do great research or a lo- make a loving family is just completely cut off if you kill that embryo so it's the idea of the potential of what it could become and what it can do for others. Also, other ways, how can we motivate these corporations, these companies, these private fund institutes, um, and maybe motivate them away from more around stem cell research to adult or other stem cell research if we focus on the Some hospitals are picking up the idea that they are taking the vocal cord from the woman mm-hmm. when she gives birth. Yes. They actually have a decent amount of adult stem cells and they don't have to like any type of procedure because usually they just discard as medical waste. Is that cord blood? Is that what I've heard? Cord blood, yes. cord blood? Okay, what, what's that process look like other than we just got that? I mean, pretty much they just like cut it out and now some doctors are saying like, can we use this for our research purposes or can we just discard it? And most people will probably say medical you know, purposes because they're not going to make it. So they're, they're motivating new mothers to save some quantity of cord blood, is that correct? For future use by other people or by themselves? For probably for the doctor's purpose of like extracting what they can, which is really not much. And okay. what is there is not as powerful as these embryos, which is, just makes it so much harder to make the process easier for us. So, from the medical community standpoint, we would like to preserve that core blood because we can use that to do some medical experimentation on the may save us from destroying an embryo, right? Yes. I would say there's also maybe a motivation from the, that new mother's standpoint of saving that cord blood as well. Is anybody familiar? Okay. Those are stem cells for her child that couldn't possibly be used in the future by that child in some therapeutic fashion, right? Already compatible, their own blood uh, could be preserved. Uh, do we know any numbers on people who are preserving cord blood at this point? I'm not sure, but the research I've done, like more hospitals are starting to pick it up and start to ask their patients, like, it's okay if we take your cord blood to use it for research purposes. So now it's becoming an option that's given to a to a new mother? Yes. Or mother and father. Yeah. Okay, so cord blood, one good one. Is there any other ways that we're coming up with new and dynamic ways of getting stem cells without destroying embryos? the same blood type, it's very rare that you would find somebody with that same bone marrow type. Is, do you, did you get down into how that works, Eli? No, you know I any more know, details on that? Or just, just that it's an option? Okay, it's fine. I just knew, I, I've always heard about people registering so that they could make possibly be a bone marrow donor. A lot of words, bone marrow donor. Okay. Um, all right, gentlemen. Well, um, what time have we done? Have we done it? Uh, 40. 40, okay. You said bone marrow was one of them. You said something else, Eli. I just didn't hear. Yeah, uh, where they take the blood out of one arm, run it Oh, that was the one with the two. Yes. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. It's pretty what, what about, you know, we have organ donation. What about someone who's killed in a, you know, tragic automobile accident? Can you harvest from, a, you know, God forbid, someone who has died a traumatic death? Can stem cells be harvested from a, you know, a Shift a little bit. I saw on your prompt you focused mostly on uh, stem cell research in the United States. You said you did veer a little bit into the international debate around stem cell research. Talk to me a little bit about stem cells internationally. Are they are they a 
a high topic in the medical community internationally? Or are we just focusing on that here? And are, are there any rules and regulations around this that you guys are aware of? Yeah. South Korea has made a lot of attention on it. Okay. And they seem to be very interested in it. But there's like a lot of countries that also ban it, though, because they kind of have the most experience of themselves. And they just decide to ban all funding and research. Yeah, but that's not South Korea. No, South Korea is doing research. Do you would say they're on the forefront of stem cell research? I think so. Yeah, it's most of the countries in the world are for stem cell research. The United States is by far leading research to it. But um, South Korea, China, Australia, Australia, and Iran are the closest behind in the United States that are pushing stem cell research. There's an agency, an international agency called the World Health Organization. That typically, countries are members of them. You know, they come up with policies or regulations or whatever. Did you come across any uh, information in your research about you know, the World Health Organization and perhaps do they have a position statement on stem cell research? I don't know the answer. I suspect that they probably do or they're, you know, not that they have, you know, the World Health Organization is against it, but there's probably a position statement. Matthew 19, 14 says, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them. Do we feel like that applies to IVF in general? Do we feel like that might apply to this embryonic stem cell uh, research debate? If so, how? I believe when it comes to stem cell, I believe it would, that verse there would completely kind of shut down the idea of stem cell because you are hindering that person from developing into a child. So I would say, yeah, that particular verse would shut down stem cell research, but for IVF, I feel like now I'm helping create that child would help on their journey um, to God. So it's like it, there are drawbacks on both sides. When you have IVF, of course, you have a good amount of potential creating a person, but then you have all the leftover embryos, which is when it gets kind of shaky. So I say there's really, it's it's kind of like, yes, you can make you can make a person, for it, but you still have Okay, we still we have to free some embryos, so it's kind of you know help create a person, or help hinder them. So it's so for you that verse says uh, no to the destruction of embryos for stem cell research, but doesn't necessarily preclude you from IVF. Yes, correct. Right. So, Elon, do you feel the same, or do you feel different? Yeah, I would agree. With that. I would agree with that. I think IVF would even help more, and then it would not hinder it at all. I mean, my mom prayed for about eight years. For me, and I mean, I think that's just the way God had her after the sun. Okay, so for those people who, and I'm going to take you right back to the idea of stable because I've got about four minutes to burn here. Um, for those people who say IVF in general is playing God, you're doing something that you're not supposed to do and trying to take the ability to make life away from God and putting it in your own hands. Do you agree or disagree? Well, I would say actually. Um, I had a feeling that that question would be asked. So I'm glad I could yeah, feel I your expectations, Jack. And so the main argument to make in that standpoint is you're using the intelligence God has given you to help not create life, to help give it a push. So okay. it's, and I also came up with an analogy, it's like, let's say you're fixing a car. Okay. You're not, you didn't make the, the engine to that car, you didn't make all the components for that car, you didn't create that car. But you are helping fixing that car to where it can work again. You didn't create the car, but you helped it so that it could function again properly. So you're using the intelligence that you've been given to make a greater good. For instance, we use vaccinations. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's been like, you know, a lot of anti-vax controversy, but when it comes to, whenever you say it, whenever you hear vaccinations, you're not playing God by healing someone. You're using the intelligence that you've been given to help preserve life. So 
there's less controversy when it comes to preserving life than there is to such as abortion, which is destruction of life, or cloning, which is 